Hello, how are you? Today we are going to talk about lumbar disc herniation. This information is especially useful for those who have had symptoms for several weeks in the lower back, not in the neck area. Let's consider the two main options. Have surgery now. Oh. Don't have surgery for now, and try things like a change in the way you do your activities, pain control medication, exercise, physiotherapy, or steroid injections. But let's start at the beginning. The bones that make up the spine, the vertebrae, are protected by small, spongy discs. When these discs are healthy, they act as shock absorbers for the spine and keep it flexible. But when a disc is damaged, it can bulge or rupture. This is called a herniated or ruptured disc. It may be the result of a blow to the area. Other times, bone mass is lost from the vertebrae due to osteoporosis, which causes them to lose height and the intervertebral discs to herniate. It can happen that a tumor in another organ metastasizes, reaching the vertebrae. In rare cases, the cause is a tumor growing in the vertebrae. It is also very rare that a neural tumor, which arises in the local fibers, can injure the nerves, leading to a herniated disc. A herniated disc does not always cause symptoms, but when it presses on nerve roots, it can cause pain, numbness, and weakness in the area of the body where the nerve passes. Sometimes it can cause pain and numbness in the buttocks and lower leg, known as sciatica. In most cases, symptoms improve over time, with or without treatment. For one or more of the following reasons, symptoms have lasted at least six weeks, make it difficult to perform normal activities, and other treatments have not helped. You need to get better quickly to return to work or other duties as soon as possible. You have leg weakness that is getting worse. Your herniated disc is causing bowel or bladder problems. Non-surgical treatments can often help you feel better, be more active and avoid surgery. Many people are able to control their symptoms with things like trying other ways of doing activities that minimize pain. For example, if your symptoms get worse when you are sitting down, try standing up, or alternate between sitting and standing. Take medication to control pain. Medications such as NSAIDs or paracetamol are often tried first. Sometimes other medicines are tried, such as stronger painkillers or muscle relaxants, or steroid injections are used. Exercise. Aerobic exercise can relieve symptoms. For example, you can take a short walk, 10 to 20 minutes, on a level surface, no hills, no stairs, every two to three hours. However, it is advisable to walk only for distances that can be done without pain, especially in the legs. Physiotherapy. The practitioner can teach stretching and strength exercises that can reduce pain and other symptoms, as well as make everyday tasks easier. Several of these strategies may need to be combined to control pain. If there is improvement after six weeks, this is a good sign. Often the body reabsorbs the disc material, which helps the pain go away. The aim of the interventions is to relieve pressure on the nerve roots. For this purpose, disc material is usually removed. This is called discectomy. There are different ways of removing disc material. These are open discectomy. This is performed through a large incision in the back. Microdiscectomy. This is done through a smaller incision. 
It causes less damage to the surrounding tissue, minimally invasive procedures. This is done with one or more tiny incisions in the back. The doctor can insert special instruments through the incisions, such as cutting devices, thermal devices, or lasers, to cut or destroy part of the disc. Studies have shown no noticeable difference in the effectiveness of each of these procedures. Therefore, together with the physician, it will be necessary to decide which treatment is the most appropriate depending on several aspects. These include the particular body structure, the symptoms, which disc is herniated, what one prefers, and the expertise and experience of the physician. In some cases, a small piece of bone may be removed from the affected vertebra. This small piece is called the lamina. It is the thin part of the vertebrae that forms a protective arch over the spinal cord. A laminectomy removes most or all of the lamina. Thickened tissue that is narrowing the spinal canal can also be removed. Either of these procedures can be done at the same time as a disectomy or separately. Your doctor may recommend a rehabilitation program after surgery, which may include physiotherapy and home exercises. Lumbar disc herniation surgery works well and eliminates all or most of the symptoms, but there are patients who do not do as well. In a study of people with sciatica caused by a herniated disc, the chances of having NO or almost no symptoms three months to two years later were somewhat higher with surgery than with non-surgical treatment. But overall, most people felt better with or without surgery. In a study of people who had 6 to 12 weeks of severe sciatica related to a herniated disc, one group was assigned to have surgery early, the surgery group. The other group, the non-surgical group, was assigned to try non-surgical treatments for 6 months followed by surgery if their symptoms did not improve. Both groups were asked about their recovery two months after surgery or the start of non-surgical treatment. Patients in the surgical group felt better, closer to full recovery, than those in the non-surgical group. However, after one year, both treatment groups rated their recovery about the same. If you do not opt for surgery now, you can change your mind later if your symptoms have not improved or have even worsened with other treatments. Surgery seems to work just as well if it is done within six months of the onset of symptoms. What are the risks of surgery? Most people have no problems with herniated disc surgery. But, as with most surgery, there are some risks. There is a risk of damaging nerves or the spine during the operation. Also, some people form a lot of scar tissue in the operated area. This tissue can press on the nerves and cause pain. Between 1 and 3 percent of those who have had surgery have had nerve root damage or new or aggravated nerve-related problems, such as weakness, numbness, or tingling. There is a risk of wound problems such as infection and hematoma, which affected less than 2 percent of those operated on. Serious side effects of anesthesia are rare, but can include breathing problems, heart attack, stroke, and even death. There is a chance that surgery may not relieve symptoms. And even if you get better with surgery, there is a chance that you may have new symptoms in the future. 4 to 10 percent of people who have had surgery for herniated discs have surgery again. A herniated disc in the lower back is a common cause of back and leg pain. For most people, symptoms improve over time, with or without treatment. 
Many people are able to manage their symptoms with changes in the way they do their activities, pain management medications, exercise, physical therapy, or steroid injections. If one thing doesn't work, you can try another or combine some of them. Surgery may relieve pain faster than non-surgical treatments. For symptoms that have lasted at least six weeks and make normal activities difficult, surgery is an option when other treatments have not helped. In the long term, surgery and non-surgical treatments work about equally well to reduce pain and other symptoms. Back surgery has some risks, including infection, nerve damage, and the possibility that surgery will not relieve symptoms. And even if you get better with surgery, there is a chance of having new symptoms later. If you don't choose surgery now, you can always change your mind later, especially if your symptoms haven't improved or have even worsened with other treatments. And that's it for today. Whatever you decide, I hope it goes very well. Thank you very much.